Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Allie if you're new and welcome to Beauty with the Purpose. So if you are new to my channel, my name is Allie. I upload three videos a week, a beauty, bible, and lifestyle. But if any if any of those interest you, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get into today's video. So for today's video, I have for you guys a chit chat, get ready with me, as well as a Q&A slash full face of nothing new. So anyways, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into applying this makeup and answering some questions. I may or may not change my hair. We'll see what I decide once the makeup is on because you know hair can, makeup can really change the way your hair looks. Right now, I'm just not feeling it. I'm not happy with it. So we're going to see how I feel about it once we have some makeup on our face. So let me just head over to the gram and get to these questions. Ooh, juicy. I'm so extra annoying. I feel so strange because it's been so long since, long since I've filmed. Okay, so the first question I've asked, and I love how random these are because I did say like, hey, this is a random Q&A, like ask me anything, anything under the sun, ask me. And so the first question was, what is the scariest movie I have ever seen? And that would have to be between all of the paranormal activities and The Conjuring. I have not watched a scary movie since I have started living the Christian lifestyle just because of the spirits that scary movies can invite into your home. Because what a lot of people fail to realize is that what you listen to and what you watch are portals for spirits to enter into your mind. And not only that, but presents themselves in the physical as demons or spirits that taunt you. So I learned that once I started following God. So I, ha I actually have not watched scary movies in a very long time. But out of those two, par all the whole, t the entire, I don't think I've seen the most recent one. The last one I seen was with like the Mexican family, which I think is like four, but all of the paranormal activities is super scary. And I think it's because like that stuff has really happened to my family, like in real life. So it, I don't know, I don't know, but, <laughs> and the conjuring, the conjuring, oh my gosh, that one was, no, we're not even gonna do that. Okay, and then, oh, and I will link everything I'm using down below just in case I forget to, say it or show it, um, it'll be linked and there will be, you know, like what I'm using on the screen. And the next question was, have you ever peed yourself from laughing? Honestly, I have not. But every time I have been pregnant, I have peed myself from throwing up. And it's kind of that weird battle of, do I just throw up and pee on myself or do I sit on the toilet and pee while I'm throwing up into the trash can, but I don't really want to clean up that mess. Ugh. Okay, so my next question was, how am I feeling today? I am feeling overall pretty good. A little bit overwhelmed, and it's not that anything overwhelming is happening, but um, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed because I've been trying to film since last week, and stuff kept coming up. There were things to do, and then like this morning, I couldn't get my the phone that I film on. It was not wanting to work. And I'm sure y'all will see in Raquel's vlog how busted up my filming camera is. But I've been making it work and it's gonna continue to work. And I mean, we're gonna ride this thing till the wheels fall off. So anyways, I was having tr trouble getting it to work, but I finally got it. And then the boys woke up a little bit late. I woke up late and it's just very overwhelming for me when my schedule gets interrupted in any shape, form or fashion, even waking up late. Like anything that puts a dent in my usual routine and schedule completely makes me feel overwhelmed for the rest of the day. But I'm calming down now that I'm able to sit down and film. The next thing I just gotta think about is I have to get lunch ready by 1 30 by one o'clock and it's already 11 40 and the boys i made them a little fruit salad so just some whipped cream and some fruit this is bryce the what bryson and king didn't eat combined so now i'm eating it that's usually my breakfast is their scraps but um yeah but i'm feeling overall good just a little overwhelmed thank you so much for asking because some people don't take the time to just ask like hey how are you doing where all have you traveled to Ooh, okay, so I've been to Missouri, I believe. 
Obviously, I live in Texas. I have now been to Georgia and Tennessee. I've been to Florida, Colorado, and California. And that is it. Like, I've never really been out of the States. I'm too scared to go out of the States because I watch too many freaking movies like Taken and Hostel. And Brian's always like, oh, we should go overseas. And I'm like, no. Hey. Because what I'm not gonna do is be somebody's little bis baby. Like, that's what I'm not gonna do. Like, no, I'm not getting taken. I'm not getting snatched up because you know what? I don't have the daddy from taken as my daddy. My daddy's on dialysis. He cannot come save me if I am taken overseas. So we're not doing that. We're not playing that at all. It says, favorite part of makeup, bronzer, blush, brows, ooh. You see, this one was hard, and I just recently commented on Leela's channel one of, on one of her videos. Like, I truly do not know what my favorite step of makeup is, but I would have to say the entire process of complexion. So, foundation, concealer, bronzer, blush, highlighter, setting, like, that has to be my overall favorite part of makeup and it's only because that's where to me the true transformation come from like you can be artistic with like your eyeshadow and things like that but i'm not artistic with my eyeshadow i'm very basic the most you will see out of me is a halo eye or a cut crease so to me i really love the complexion products being able to make my face look slimmer or more snatched like that's all my jam so but if i had to pick just one just one I would have to say concealer because even if I don't have any of the other products, I could spot conceal and conceal the dark spots under my eyes. And because of the way my face is, like this is natural bronze from my tan. I have natural rosiness like my grandma to my cheeks. And then like, obviously I have like a natural glow to my face. So if I had to pick only one thing, it would be concealer. It would have to be my absolute favorite makeup product. I don't think that was the question, but whatever. Top three favorite drugstore products ever or just at the moment? Woo, top three favorite drugstore products ever. Woo, I can't, why did I all of a sudden, when I originally read this question, I was like, ooh, I got it. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, what are they? Oh my gosh. Okay, L'Oreal Infallible Foundation, the liquid hard candy makeup grip um, primer and elf sponge. Has to be my top three. It just so happened they all happen to be right in front of me but it has to be those three things that I have repurchased or will repurchase. Repurchase, repurchase. You guys, no matter how much sunscreen I put on my face, my nose always ends up sunburned. And also, how many of you are loving the freckles that are in full effect from this tan that I've got going on? Okay, and have you had any weird dreams lately? Um, I have, and they're weird when I'm in the moment but they're also the dreams that you can't remember but you wake up and you're like that was weird but one dream that i will never forget and it was so weird and i don't know if it was a dream from god or something spiritual or the devil taunting me in my dreams but i had a dream one time where i was talking to brian and all of a sudden like as i'm talking to him in my dream looking at him like mind y'all this is in my dream like all of a sudden he transformed, like started like morphing into my ex. And I was like, is, now is this coming from a fear inside of me that I'm scared that Brian's gonna be the same way that he was? Or is this like a warning from God that Brian has the same tendencies? Or like, am I truly just being taunted by the enemy being like, ha ha, you, you just pick the same kind of guys all the time. And I was just like, man, like what is this? But the more I've prayed about it and thought about it, it was a fear of mine that Brian would end up being like my ex, which he has not at all whatsoever, not even close. And so it was just a fear that I had because trauma, PTSD. I'm gonna finish up my brows and then we'll continue on. I'm gonna use the Kylie Jenner, um, what is this, concealer to carve out my brows. So whenever you guys see me again and my brows are carved out, this is what I used. All right, so now we will get into, I'm gonna use my Urban Decay eyeshadow primer. And then we will get into eyeshadow, but I'm debating, like we're probably gonna go to the gym later. Do I wanna do something dramatic or do I wanna do something like cool and simple? I do wanna go pick up my niece and nephew to give my sister a break while she does laundry and take all the kids to the park for a bit. Okay, so the palette I'm using, so controversial, is the Tati Beauty palette. 
You see, I love Tati. I miss Tati. I can't wait for her to make a comeback. But I'm gonna use her palette today. I absolutely love this palette. And honestly, you guys, I'm just the type of person that I'm like, that drama ain't got nothing to do with me. It does not affect my life personally. So I'm gonna keep my Tati Beauty palette and I'm gonna keep using it. And I hope you are the same type of person. So anyways, I am gonna take a matte aura and start setting down my eyelids with that while we answer the next question, which is, do you want any more kids? You see, this is a tough question. Do I want, it's, it's very complex because do I want any more kids? Flat out, no. But I really do want a daughter and that's why we're waiting so long because we completely understand, hey, like we can't just go buy a daughter, like. <laughs> We can't. Um, and Brian and I have always wanted to get into fostering as well. So there's always that option. If, but like me physically having a baby, I don't want to. But like I said, I really want a little girl. But yeah, I don't know. Yes and no. I want a little girl, but I don't want to be pregnant. <laughs> um, what is your number one potty training tip? Whew. Number one potty training tip would have to be go at your own go at your own pace and know your child because it's really easy for instance i have a lot of people in my life for whatever reason they always have a child that's in the same age range as one of the children that i'm having to potty train and your child may not be ready when their child is and their child may not be ready when your child is so just understand that your child is uniquely and wonderfully made and they don't have the same personality as another kid. So go based on the child's timeline and not your own. Because with Ethan, he was potty trained at one and a half, two. Bryson was potty trained right at two and King is already two and a half and he barely got potty trained. So you can, it kind of just goes based depend on the kid because I know people who can have their kids potty trained by the time they're one. And it just, and also know your patience. Know your patience. So if you already know, like, I would do test trials. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna just go ahead and give y'all a whole lecture on potty training. So I would do test trials. So for instance, I would test out different methods that I've worked for other people to see what's gonna help your child. So with King, it was a very long process. Now the actual, getting him to go in the potty process did not take long at all it literally only took like three days i stayed home had him in underwear and put him on the potty every chance i got and if he wouldn't potty after like two to three minutes i'd let him up and then i would ask him again like you know like do you feel like you need a potty and he was scared to go pee in the potty at first but every kid is different so like with ethan i was able to potty train with pull-ups um and then and then graduate him to underwear with bryson we had to go straight underwear and he had to start off standing up. Ethan had to learn how to stand up. And with King, we had to go straight underwear and he sits down. So it was it's kind of like every kid is different. So just know your kid. And I would also do like a month long period of introducing, like taking them to the bathroom with you so they know like well, what goes in the potty. And you know, like you could pee, like let them hear it and then show them like this is pee, pee goes in the potty. Even your poop, I know it sounds disgusting, but I mean, every bottle, every human does this. So poop, show them, hey, like this is this is where you poop. And also the pull-ups are good for whenever you're not ready to start potty training, but to teach them the motor skill of taking their pants on and off and their underwear on and off and putting them on like with their shorts. I did that with King for like a month of just introducing him to what the potty is, what goes in there, getting comfortable to sitting on it. And then we did the week of only underwear and he's completely potty trained now, uh, even sleeps all the way through the night, no peeing. He takes his nap in underwear and he now sleeps in underwear. So like I said, know your kid and know your patience limit. Cause that's one thing with Brian, he was like, Allie, just don't do any methods that are gonna frustrate you. So if you wanna try underwear, make sure you have the patience to be washing underwear every single day. Cause like I said, we tried the underwear with Ethan and I was literally, we didn't have a washer and dryer and I was having to hand wash underwear every single day, pee and poop. Because for one, the one pack of underwear that we had for him was all we could afford. So it's not like we could just throw them away and go buy more. And we didn't have a washer and dryer. So I was washing them by hand, but do what is comfortable with your child. 
and trust them when they tell you, hey, mom, I don't have to go potty right now. Still try, but if they sit down and they don't do anything, let them up. Don't make them sit there upon hours and hours. And one thing I learned a lot with my last two, because I was really rough on Ethan. And I mean, your first kid is your trial kid. So kudos to Ethan for hanging in with me. <laughs> like, <laughs> But like with Bryson and King, like I really learned that like you have to be really gentle with them because if not, then they get scared to potty. They get scared of the toilet. They're scared of it. So yeah just know your kid and also don't do what's going to frustrate you because you don't want your child to feel like oh i can't do anything right i just can't get it i'm making mom mad mom doesn't love me mom's always so just it's it's so mental for the child so know and understand your child first of all it would have to be my number one is know and understand your child and your patience limit how do you increase productivity as a stay-at-home mom Ooh, love this one i'm gonna go in with um a little bit of ritual so how do i increase my productivity that would have to be having a schedule for myself just as if i had a job and having a routine so i wake up every morning today like i said today i woke up late and it threw off my entire mood for the day i'm finally calming back down like i feel more at peace now it could be the tea too that's helping me but i try to wake up every day at six or seven no later than seven and i get up i spend my time with god like just having a schedule like you don't have to I'll, i might do a morning routine if you guys want to see that let me know if you guys want to see like a morning routine um and I will definitely film that, but it is very much so just having a schedule whether the boys are in school or not, because I was starting to be like, oh, I can rest um, now that I don't have to get up and take Ethan to school. But my mind and my body and the way I function, because it was a part of my routine, it was really throwing me off. So I stay productive by kind of like, okay, this day is laundry day, this day is grocery day. This day we're going on this outing. These days are gym days, but keeping myself on a schedule just as if I had a job. Like that would probably be my number one mom, stay at home mom tip is put yourself on a schedule just as if you had a job. I promise you it'll help you so much. And even, I even have a scheduled day for whenever I clean the bathrooms. I only clean them on Saturdays. I only, I, I spot vacuum throughout the week, but I only hand like with the actual vacuum. I do that on Saturdays as well. Like I have a schedule for everything every night at eight o'clock. It's time to start getting the house cleaned and prepped for the next day. I do challenge you guys though. Like if you have trouble cleaning, clean your main living areas. So your living room and your kitchen every single night before bed and just see how much, how much more refreshing it is to feel like you started your day with a clean slate and like you're not having like all these tasks staring you in the face. Like that has really helped me as well is getting my um, house cleaned at nighttime because I feel like I'm ready to tackle on the day. Like I don't have to worry about cleaning this up, cleaning that up and then getting out the door. All I have to do is, okay, let's get breakfast, get dressed, fix beds, we can get out the door. Like that has helped so much, especially like whenever you have appointments. Cause for instance, majority of my babies are summer babies and so the summertime is filled with you know like dentist appointments doc uh well checks like majority of my summer is filled up with appointments and having that schedule and cleaning at nighttime really helps with that and like i said it really does help me be more productive throughout the day to just have that schedule because there's no time for idleness now i'm not saying work yourself to death do also schedule in rest days days off just like if you had a real job schedule yourself days off i have to learn how to do that so wednesdays are my days off they always have been they always will be that's why i don't upload on wednesdays because that means i would be required to edit on a wednesday and so yeah don't kill yourself don't overdo it know your limits know your boundaries again know who you are like i said know who you are that's going to be like the main thing that truly helps you in this day at home mom journey that will help you adjust is especially if you're going from a full-time job into transitioning into a stay-at-home job it's gonna be hard for you if you don't put yourself on a routine or a schedule because you're either gonna go stir crazy not knowing what to do or you'll end up being doing what i did and being just a lazy bum because i was at first i did not know how to be a wife a stay-at-home wife at first I was so lazy. Still expected Brunt girl. She's gonna do lashes and mascara and then we will be back. And I'm using the Kiss. I'm going to be using the Kiss 01 lashes and the L'Oreal Mega Air or Air Volume 
mega mascara. See, I knew the word mega was in there. I knew it. So I will be right back. Oh my lanta, I forgot how pretty these lashes are. Love, love. Okay, so we're gonna try this foundation, but your girl don't got tan. So let me try real quick. Yeah, that's a little bit too light. <laughs> so all of my foundations, literally all of them are way too light for me right now. But y'all remember when I bought this ordinary foundation in 2.1 and I was like, it's so freaking dark. It's way too dark for me, blah, blah, blah. Well, I never took it back. And thank the Lord I never took it back because this is now my perfect summer shade. I never thought this would be, I never thought this would happen. I never thought I would ever be this tan, but being a boy mom does something to you. Cause boys got a lot of energy and you're like, how else to get rid of this energy than exhaust them in the sun outside in the heat. So your girl, look at that. Your girl don't got dark and tan. Ooh, she's cute. She's tan. What's my favorite workout? Um, I'm gonna do my body part. I'm gonna give you guys one of my favorite workouts for every body part. So for abs, I really like reverse crunches because it works out your entire core, but it's really gonna help you get rid of that mama pooch. Um, for back, I love lat pull downs. For chest, I love, um, chest uh chest press with dumbbells and then for biceps i love hammer curls for triceps i love um kickbacks but if you're able to get to a gym and you have cables i like the overhead extension with the cables or the cable pull downs you don't you know you have is dumbbells i like tricep kickbacks and then for I like calf raises for your calves, and then I like um, squats and lateral lunges for your thighs with a glute band on. Top three favorite YouTube channels. You guys obviously already know for beauty, well, I really watch like Alexis, Jada, Juicy Jazz, Raquel, and Leela. And then I really like Stephanie Sue and Bailey Sarian. And then I like, um, Truth and Edited. Those are my top three. Stephanie Sue, Bailey Sarian, Truth and Edited. Ooh, I love this question. Is Texas really the best state to live in? Yes. Yes, it is. It also depends on your morals and I guess your political view in a sense. And I love that Texas is still at, at its core so conservative. And it's not because like, oh, I don't believe in women's rights or beat the woman down or anything like that. Because I love how they said it at my church. It's not a race issue. It's not a, which party is better than the other. It's a moral issue at the end of the day. And as Christians, we're called to be moral, morally sound. And so, yeah, I would say yes especially depending on your beliefs and so according to my beliefs and what i the truth i stand on yes texas really is the best state to live in and not only that but texas is fully back open our cases are going down and our children well at least where i live because i know there's still some places in texas where their children are still doing school virtually but here where i live kids are fully back in school no mask anything and like i said our cases in Texas as a whole are going down. So I love Texas. God bless Texas. And I believe that that's why Texas is so blessed is because we hold true and near to dear to our heart, the statutes and limitations of the most high. Best advice for a new mom, mom the way that feels comfortable to you and always tell yourself fed is best. Not everyone's body can breastfeed and not everyone agrees with formula so always just hold near and dear to you, your heart that fed is best and parent the way that is comfortable for you and that works for you without endangering your child but i feel like i had to throw that disclaimer out there but do it the way that works for you you know i know people that don't yell at their kids and all they do is do straight whoopings um i know people that do timeouts and no whoopings. I know people who basically, but maybe not yelling, but lecturing. Um, we discipline, 
we do. We also help our children understand what they're being disciplined for and why. We don't just, and parent, parent in a way that's best for you, that fits your schedule and your lifestyle. Fed is best and never discipline out of anger. Never discipline out of anger. That's when you can abuse, unintentionally harm your child, um, whether it be physically, mentally, or emotionally. Never discipline out of anger. And also remember, yes, you can love all your kids equally, but you cannot love them the same because they are not the same. Each kid requires love in their own different love language just as adults do so you can love them all the same or you can love them all equally but you cannot show them love the same way because they're not all the same remember your kids are different Aww. someone asked how have i been Whew. may was rough may was really rough for me here at home like my home life and it had nothing to do with brian it was just rough for me to adjust to a lot of changes that were going on and brian and i both already know like i do not like change i do not do well with change for the simple fact that i do not do well with the unknown i don't like the unknown i have a fear of the unknown it causes i really do not i like to know everything so when there's a change that's going on where i cannot know everything i don't like it I don't like it, it's hard for me. It's hard for me to adjust, it's hard for me to understand. It's hard for me to be compassionate towards others because my life is changing. And I forget that sometimes other people's life are changing, but May was hard. The beginning of June was a little bit rough, but these last two weeks, ever since I had my counseling session last week, I've made some changes and gotten back into my routine of things and just been focusing on my not myself but my mental and emotional and spiritual health again things have gotten a lot better and i'm feeling so much better um so thank you for asking again these how am i doing and how am i feeling questions are not questions that get asked a lot and it's usually like for me i'm someone who's always asking people those questions and i feel like the people who are always checking on others rarely get checked on I'm really not gonna do much on the lower lash line. I'm gonna just go in with this ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in Puppy. And then I am gonna take the brush that we used, um, Matte Ritual, and just run that across my lower lash line. So, getting back into the questions. What's something you have been enjoying to do now that the warmer weather has appeared? I don't know where you're from, Miss Ruth, but here, in Lubbock, Texas, we went sh straight from winter into straight up hot. <laughs> but um, I was just making that joke to say, I don't even know what warmer means because we went from 60s to 70s to 100s. And it's, but one thing I have really been loving, what is going on with my hairline? But one thing I have really been loving to do is um, I've really been loving swimming. I've always loved swimming since I was a kid, and now I'm just glad we have a pool membership that has a kiddie pool so I can chill in it with the youngin, and the older ones can go in like the three feet of the big pool and just run around and have fun. So I've been loving the pool and just all things that include water and outdoors. Okay, the next question is, guys, you have to be careful with this blush if you have it. It's such a pretty blush. Someone said, engagement story time. How and when did Brian pop the question? Um, there's no romantic way that Brian asked or no romance to it at all. Um, when Brian and I started dating, we had it, um, like even whenever we were just talking as friends and we did like the whole, let's be friends first, we had already communicated that what we were looking for was not like a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship. We weren't even looking to be engaged. We were looking for our spouse, The one that God had for us. So he, like we already had in our mind, like if we're gonna start this dating thing, it is with the intentions to be married. And so it was kind of random. Like it was one day after church and he was buckling Ethan into the car for me. And I forgot what happened, but something significant happened that he just happened to like stop what he was doing. And he called me to look at him. And he was like, like, he was like, I know we've talked about it, but seriously, like, 
will you marry me? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I will. <laughs> so it wasn't like, there was nothing like, um, not that it wasn't romantic because it was romantic to me. It was meaningful to me because it was genuinely like, just like a moment between him and I. And that's honestly how I love for all of mine and Brian's special moments to be, are just between me and him. You know, like, I don't know, maybe it's selfish. Maybe I just, I don't know. I just like for them to be me and him for memories that we can treasure together. I mean, I'll share them when I'm asked, but in the midst of it, I like them to be just between him and I. Okay, and let me do my lips real quick. They already know I'm not good at talking <laughs> and doing my lips. All right, last question is, are you planning to homeschool the boys later on? If so, what made you want to? From the get-go, it has always been a plan of Brian and I to homeschool. We have always had the plan to let them go and get their foundational skills of like having a schedule of what school is, knowing what school is. So basically up till about fifth grade because here fifth grade is the last grade of elementary and then we will re-evaluate what school they're at and things like that but we are people who are very open to homeschool. The only reason we have not done it is because we live somewhere where there is a Harmony Science Academy and they are very focused on not trying to instill different religions beliefs on, on, on your child. So for instance, if something is going to go against anybody's religious beliefs, they're not going to teach it. So for instance, this whole push of like, being okay and things like that that are going on in like California and Colorado and things like that um his school is not about and they like Ethan has even because there's a lot of holidays that we don't celebrate and I will let his school know like hey here's a note Ethan's going to be absent this day because we don't celebrate this holiday and they're like okay cool like excused absence um they're very lenient and their curriculum is a one I mean Ethan's basically on a first grade, re first to second grade reading level, and he's only out of kindergarten. And by the time he was out of first grade, he was already learning like syllables. I mean, can, after, by the time he's out of pre-K, he's already learning syllables and things like that. So that is why we are keeping them in school right now because we have Harmony Science Academy, which is basically a charter school. And if you don't know what a charter school is, it's basically a free private school, if that makes any sense at all. So they wear the uniforms, they have the like it's a gated school like it's 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 legit you guys and so and like you have to meet very specific criteria to even go to this school so the simple fact the only reason my boys got into that school is because brian is a disabled veteran so just that we have an idea of like you know like not just anybody can go in and apply at this school like you have to meet a very specific criteria to go there and you have to be able to keep up with the curriculum and so that's why we keep them there but the reason we want to homeschool is because america is going to hell in a handbasket because because these morals and these ways that they're trying to instill and push push on your children is just not okay i don't want my child going to school and being like there's just too many videos out right now for instance the teaching that it is a sexual orientation that it's not wrong it's trying to teach kids that is okay it's not i'm trying to, because i'm just like okay ethan's going into first grade is this something i really want him to know no now my children do already know that a woman's parts are a vulva and vagina and that a man's parts are penis and testicles like my children already know that and i taught them that because i want them to know that if a man or growing person says hey let me see your penis and we're not in a doctor's office and i'm not with you it is not okay and also <clears throat> Just so when they are in school and they are introduced to these words, they don't make it, um, they don't receive it like in a pervert type of way, like they don't become pervertive about it. And so I'm teaching them all of these things at home so that way I, I can also control what they're learning at school in a sense. So that it all starts at home. 
so I don't know I would say I kind of do a combination of the two without actually doing like a true hybrid pro hybrid program we're very involved but like I said the reason we are even considering eventually pulling them out probably at middle school is because of our beliefs we choose to serve the most high we choose to live by his statutes and limitations and America is not as much for that as they once were. I think people have forgotten that America was built on the statutes and limitations of God, that we have progressed so far into, that's what's wrong with progressive Christianity, is like you're trying to progress in the way that pleases the world instead of trying to teach the world to please God. And it's just a snow, snowball effect, and that is why we want to homeschool. To set, I'm going to use my wine and make it last. And I'm sorry if what I said came off harsh. Um, I never mean to offend anybody. I will just share what's in the word of God. And I don't wanna sound like if it hurt, it hurt. But honestly, like I didn't say it, the Bible did. <laughs> I just stand by what it said. That is why I wanna homeschool because I truly, Brian and I want to be very involved in what our children are being taught what morals and values they are being held on to because a lot of what Americans have, Americans have become so dependent on the government that obviously the government is within our school system and now the government is starting to pay you for your children basically. And what people are starting, are failing to realize like once you allow that, once you allow the government and like that means food stamps, Medicaid, all of this to be your only source of everything, then they have you in a position where they can control you. And that's not okay because I mean, if America was founded on freedom, why would you put yourself back in a predicament where they can now control you again? I, it's just another form of slavery without the fields. So all of that craziness being said, I hope that you guys really did enjoy this video. If you liked it, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button. And if you would like to be a part of my next Q&A, be sure to follow me on Instagram. I do these every once in a while, about every two to three months. I would love to do one every month. Maybe I will start doing that. But yeah, I love you guys. Always remember that Jesus loves you more. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Mwah.